Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today is a special episode. Valentine's is just around the corner, and I wanted to make this particular tutorial actually be themed for the wonderful event called Valentine. I am going to show you how to create this pillow using Maya. Now this is a photograph. I'm going to create something very similar. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need, of course, is to create the pillow itself. The best way would probably be with a cube. And we're going to build a pillow. It's always important to go ahead and start with some basic subdivisions to get it started. Go ahead and grab these faces all the way along here. You just shift and double click. Go ahead and expand it out, scale it, maybe bring it in a little bit so you can get some nice edges. Grab some vertices and just scoot them in so you can get a little bit of a pillow shape. See, it's a little thick. I'm going to make it thinner. Press 3 if you want to see what it looks like. Not too bad. So far, so good. All right, so now that I have the basics, let's go ahead and texture it. I am going to be planar mapping it, so I'm going to go to my top view. I am going to go to Polygons, Create UVs, Player Mapping Options. I always make sure to keep my image with height ratio active and also go ahead and do Y axis because it's going to be planar mapping from the top and project. Project. I'm going to go to my Windows Editor, Windows UV Texture Editor. There is my UV map. And now it's time to do a little cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and select, again, double click. That edge gets selected. And using this handy tool, we're going to, actually, I'm going to use the bottom seam right here. And I'm going to cut. I'm going to grab one UV, control right click to shell, press W to move, and there you go. I get two UV maps. Next, I'm going to go to Polygons, and I'm going to lay it out, which is going to lay them out for me. And then, of course, anything automatic, you always want to go ahead and tweak it. So I'm going to go to Shell again. So select the UV, Control right click to Shell, and just kind of move it around until you're happy with its position. Maybe you might scale it down a little bit here. Okay. As long as both of them are fitting, that's the important part in the zero to one space. I'm going to set my project first. I've already created a project folder for this with all my images. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and go to File, Set Project. Find your project, set it. Now you can go to Polygons, UV Snapshot. It will browse. When you browse it, it's going to place it in the Images folder. So you can see it's going to drop it off at Images. This is where you're going to label it. I'm going to call this my my pillow UV snap. I'm going to use a 1024 by 1024 map. That's 1K. Make sure it's a TIFF and then click OK. All right, now we're ready for Photoshop. I know it's in images, so I'm going to go to images and grab it and drag it here. I'm going to go to my channels and delete that alpha map. I don't need it. Double click on this background and change it to UV snap. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, grab a magic wand and select the outside space, go to my new layer, layer one, and then I'm going to go to select, modify, ex contract, 10. I'm going to fill it with a neutral gray, again, HSB, hue, saturation, black, change it to 50%. I'm going to fill it up, shift, backspace, foreground, OK and that's going to be my border. I'm going to create another layer I'm going to, which is going to go below everything and I'm going to lock my border and I'm going to change this to screen. Screen means that you're going to be able to um, you're, you're still going to be able to see the white lines but anything that I paint is going to be uh, it's going to be see-through. Black is going to be see-through. 
So let's go ahead and change this to screen and I'm going to lock it. Okay, so let's go ahead and find some textures that look similar to this. It's a high quality image. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but let's go ahead and copy this section, paste it. And then I'm going to shift alt in your keyboard and shrink it. Or just hold down shift to evenly shrink it. There's one. Duplicate this layer. Here's the other. Mm, it's pretty thick. Um, it's also really dark. So I'm going to do is going to use a hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm going to desaturate it a little bit so it gets a little grayer. And if I want to make it darker or lighter, I can. And I have to be careful because this will affect every layer or underneath it. So I'm going to use what's called clip art or clipping. I'm going to select my hue saturation, right click, and then say create clipping mask, which means that it will only affect the layer underneath it. To get all both of them to be affected, I'm going to create a group. I'm going to put my two textures in here. And now I'm going to tell it to right click, create clipping mask. So now it's affecting all of them. Let me go ahead and grab a heart. I'm going to copy this and bring it in. Scale it up a little bit. I'm going to use this as reference. Let's bring this down. And there's several ways I can do this. I can double click on this. And um, I think I'm going to be I'm going to go ahead and use a color overlay, which is going to be red, maybe a slightly darker red. And I'm going to call this the heart. You can put a pattern if you want to. So if you can see something that you like, such as texture, you can always try to put that on top. And I'm going to turn off my color overlay so I can see the texture. Just want a little noise. Go back to my color, color overlay. And then I'm going to try some of these to see if I can make my heart pop. Right, so right now it's a normal, it's a solid. This is a, this is a blending mode, so you can try dissolve, you can try darken, and you can see now that they kind of work together, which is actually something that I want. That's multiply, um, color burn, there's a bunch of them. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with darken, then click okay. I would like to go ahead and try the same thing with this heart. I'm gonna try darken. So you can see that even though I've tried uh, different types of modes, nothing is happening, and that's because of the effects. So I'm gonna create a group. I'm gonna plug this heart into the group. Double click on this, this is gonna be my heart group. And this one actually gets affected. So there's darken, there is multiply, and you can use several of them. I'm going to go ahead and use multiply. All right, let's find out how this looks like in Maya. I'm going to save this. I'm going to place it in, I'm going to leave it in images. This is going to be my color map. So CLR for color. I'm going to go ahead and use a PSD for now, which is Photoshop and save. Let's go back to Maya. Here's my pillow. I'm going to right click, assign new material. I'm going to use a Lambert, something simple. I'm going to grab my Lambert 2. I'm going to change this to my heart Lambert. Go to color, click on the little checker, file, little folder. There it is. Don't see anything? Press the number 6. There we are. Okay, so I decided that I need to make this look a little bit cozier. This definitely doesn't look like I want to put my head on it. So let's go back into Photoshop and there's all sorts of materials out there. You just need to find the right one that's going to fit for uh, your object. So I found this one, and I feel like it's going to give it a little bit softer feel um, than that burlap that I put on there. So I want to go ahead and uh, duplicate those two and have that. I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and grab the heart, and I'm going to shrink it a little bit. And then I'm going to use my UVs to actually create an outline that will follow the texture. I'm going to grab the magnetic lasso and the magnetic lasso how it works is that it picks up high contrast points and I'm just going to go along here and it's just going to give me a general selection. This will help me just build what I'm looking for. Okay, that's my selection. I am going to grow my selections. So select, modify, expand, 10 pixels, maybe a little bit more. 
expand 10 more pixels. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to create a new layer and I am going to fill it with a color. Then I'm going to double click on my layer and give it a stroke. I'm going to pick a red and then I'm going to grab my fill here and just reduce it to zero. So that's going to give me a little bit of, let me get closer, a little bit of a stitching that I'm kind of looking for, looking towards. I'm going to go back to my stroke and maybe change it to something thinner and also pick up the color of the heart so it matches a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to duplicate this and shrink it. Control Alt will shrink it evenly. Just I'm going to grab these. I'm going to create a new folder. This is going to be called stitching. I'm going to grab these three layers and stick them in the stitching folder. And again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the heart group, which is change it to multiply. So modify, uh, multiply. Okay, now it looks a little softer. Let's go ahead and save. Go back into Maya. Grab this guy. Reload. So much better. There's three. Yeah, it looks definitely a little bit cozier. Great, it's coming along. Okay, back in Photoshop. I'm gonna grab my group. I'm gonna duplicate my heart. And I'm going to go to my effects. And this time I'm gonna turn off my pat my two colors that I selected, and I'm going to do a stroke. It's going to be white. Oops, click OK. Again, make it thin. I'm going to grab my fill and zero it out. Shift Alt and just bring it in a little bit. Give it a little bit of a stitching feel. Back to Maya. Reload. Okay, let's go ahead and add a love note to it. So let's go ahead and create a polygon. It's going to be a very similar process. I'm going to make this very thin. I'm going to bevel it. So edit mesh, bevel. Go to your channel box. Here's the bevel. Just to give it a little bit more soft edges, I'm going to go ahead and do two for segments. Go ahead and increase the fraction. It's going to make it look a little bit smoother, softer. Again, we need to UV map this, so create uni UVs, planar map. I'm going to use the default windows, UV texture editor. I'm going to leave it as is, polygons, UV snapshot. I'm going to go ahead and browse. This is going to be my love note, UV snap. Back into Photoshop. My images, here's my love note. Delete that alpha, double click on your background, call it UV snap. Go ahead and use that same um, texture that I did before and paste, shrink it. Control T, Shift Alt. Maybe rotate it. There you go. Bring this underneath. UV snap screen. Much better. This is the reason why you add borders to your textures. It's kind of hard to work with such a open environment. You definitely want to kind of limit it. You get a more accurate sense of what you're texturing. So again, I'm going to select these two edges, create a new layer, go to select, modify, contract, 10 pixels, and then fill it with neutral gray. Border. All right. Now I just need my love note. I use this, my UV map, make a selection right here. Get a new layer. Again, I'm going to fill it. Double click. I'm going to do a stroke. Two pixels. Whoops. Color red for passion. Fill to zero. There you go. 
and I'll lock this just in case I accidentally select it. Control D. There's my UVs right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take a text tool and type in love note. Hold down shift, expand, rotate. If you hold down shift, it snaps. And finding the font. You can have, you can spend all day literally just working on fonts. So I'm gonna grab something quick and put in my love note in there. There we go. Double click. I want to go ahead and put in a color overlay, make a selection and target the red if you can. Almost, there we go. You can darken it, pattern overlay, and select this texture nice and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit, decrease the scale, go back to my color overlay, maybe make it just slightly brighter. Okay, create a group, put the love note in there, the text, Grab that one, and now you can darken it or use a different texture. It's up to you. Do you see how it looks like? Save. Test. So let's go ahead and change it to PSD. This is going to be my color. So CLR. Go back into Maya. Whoops. Assign a new material. Let's do Lambert. Delete my history, edit, delete by type history. Actually, might as well do that to both of them. So select that, click G. Lambert 3 is going to be my love note, Lambert. Color, file, folder. Love note. I'm not too convinced about a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and go back here and want the, I want the texture to be similar. So I'm going to grab the original. I'm just going to scale it a little bit and save it. Yeah, so now it looks like it's actually the same piece. I'm going to scale this a little bit. And now I'm going to grab this strike here, change it to six. And let's make this darker. Okay, it looks really hard, so I am going to add some geometry to it. Use the inserted loop tool. And just kinda, just kind of add a couple of edges and just kind of squeeze it in a little bit. G, squeeze it in. So it's a little bit more organic. All right, there you go. Yeah, select these guys and go to Mesh, Smooth. There we go. Maybe this one can divide it just a little bit more. So I'm going to go to my channels, grab my Smooth, and then change it to two divisions. That's going to make it extra high poly, but at least it will be nice and smooth for our render. And there you go. This is using Maya software. If I try to do mental ray, it's not going to render because of the, it's a PSD, so it doesn't work, but I can always change it to TIFFs or Targas and it will work just fine. There you go, guys, a little pillow with a love note next to it. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and I will see you next time.